Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Just a moment, we're gonna have Brandon Ortiz, our incoming uh, King Fellow, will be joining me. Uh, so bear with me as I navigate the technology here. Oh, here we go. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Felicia Garcia. I'm the Curator of Education at SAR's Indian Arts Research Center. Let's see, we're just waiting for Brandon to join in here. Uh, we have another oh there's brandon hello hey there everybody sorry my phone was having some trouble connecting oh that's okay i feel like always some delay here but um welcome thanks everyone who's watching for joining i'm sure we'll get some more folks tuning in in just a moment um so yeah i'm here with brandon ortiz he's going to be our king fellow this fall and we're really looking forward to having him on campus likewise uh, so I'll just to start, I'll just turn it over to you and give you a chance to introduce yourself to our viewers. Sure. First time on Instagram Live. It feels exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but hello, everybody. My name is Brandon Adriano Ortiz, and I'm from Taos Pueblo, and I'm a traditional uh, micaceous potter and uh, um, art, or soon to be architect, trying to get there. Exciting. Um, yeah, so that's something that has always intrigued me, that you are a formally trained architect, but also a micaceous potter. Um, I'm curious about, like, how those two, um, I guess, identities, like, intersect or overlap, if you're willing to talk about that. Yeah, please. Um, yeah, so I went to school for architecture, and, you know, a lot of it, a lot of modern architecture is steel and glass, but I went with the intent to focus on traditional materials. A lot of the materials and the architectural legacy at Taos Pueblo is something that runs deep. And um, mm. in a certain way, the, the earthen architecture at Taos Pueblo is the same thing as a lot of what I do with ceramics at mm. different scales. It's really just working with the, with the mud to make spaces for living um, and so that's kind of how I see it. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, I'm curious, how did you um, begin doing pottery? Is it something that's like been a family tradition? Do you have other relatives that are potters as well? You know, not as far as I know, I'm sure way back. And, <laughs> um, you know, cleaning up my grandpa's garage, I found a lot of really amazing old pots, mm -hmm. but it took for me to go to university um, where I was studying architecture and architecture is a very demanding field. So on the side, I went to a ceramics lab and was doing Western ceramics. Um, mm. Couldn't quite get the hang of it, but uh, a friend of mine at the time introduced me to Clarence Cruz. Okay. Um, an okay Wingate Potter who mm -hmm. um, was gracious enough to invite me into his class and taught me a lot of the ways of how to make your own clays and how to work with that clay. That's great. Yeah, we've done a lot of work with Clarence. He'll bring um, some of his classes up to SAR to visit the collection, which is really nice because we have a small Okia Wingate collection. But um, yeah, it's just nice to see all of the pottery. Um, so. Clarence is such an amazing guy too. He's really, I, I see him as a good friend. And, um, yeah, he he's got a gift to um yeah so we're looking forward to like as we're starting to open up a little bit more we're doing our community visits but we're looking forward to wel welcoming people to come back into the collection um so we hope you can come visit soon um I'm hoping to. great um let's see and i'm curious about what you have in your background here would you be willing to share a little bit about like any works in progress or like what the process is like 
Yeah, please. Um, so usually what I make ends up going out pretty quick. Um, but my dad loves it. All the pots that don't make it through the firing process um, kind of get distributed to the family. And so <laughs> these are a lot of the pots that have, um, haven't quite made it outside of the property. I'm just kind of, let's see. So this is one I had made for Indian Market about a year ago. Oh, that's beautiful. And I was so happy with it. And this is a lesson that Clarence Cruz taught me. Um, you never really give too much love to your pots before they're fired. Mm -hmm. He said it kind of makes their head swell. They get um, a little too excited and they blow up in the fire. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, Lonnie Vigil said something similar to me when I was uh, doing an interview with him. But that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of potters too. And Clarence, he would come up to you and be like, "That's a really ugly pot." Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they can, you know, counteract that. Um, okay. And so this was a big one I was really loving, but I think I gave a little too much love, mm. and it kind of blew right here. I don't know if you can see that. Still so beautiful. I love all of the um, like smoke clouds on it. Oh, that's something that I really try to encourage in the pots. Mm -hmm. That sort of connection. And I, I feel like it's kind of a record of each fire. Mm -hmm. You kind of get a story of what the conditions were, whether it's windy or how hot the fire was. Um, let me see. So I have a collection, I mean, through the years, really, but just more in little bean pots, little cooking vessels. Um, I bought bean pots. pots. Oh, it's truly like the best beans I've ever had. <laughs> it really does something, huh? <laughs> it's amazing. Such a good investment. Oh my God. And it's beautiful. Like I just have it out on my counter all the time so I can uh, stare at it. It's a really beautiful pot. And they're so durable. It's really amazing. I A lot of times I'll make pots and encourage people to cook in them and use them as they would. Mm -hmm. The cast iron. And a lot of people were yeah. afraid. I know I bought the pot because I thought it was beautiful and the artist I bought it from was like, so are you going to use it for cooking? And I wasn't sure if like that's what he intended them for or if they were meant to be just like on display. And he was like, no, I definitely encourage people to cook with my pots. And I was so nervous the first time, but it, yeah, it's so durable and it just gets like more beautiful over time, like being in contact with the fire. Yeah, you really build that relationship. Huh? It kind of like deepens in color a lot. Yes. You can kind of see the difference between the brown in this and the brown in this one. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one of them's a little darker and a little deeper, and that's just because it's been cooked in a good few times. We have one question here. Um, to our viewers, please feel free to ask any questions or make any comments, and I'm happy to relay those. Um, but this one says, how do you treat, how do you try to treat the clay before it's fired so they're not too self-absorbed? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, you know, I don't really get too fancy with anything. And maybe mm -hmm. it's not necessarily on purpose, but a lot of my tools are kind of um, a little shoddy. They're a little cheap. Mm -hmm. um, so for instance, the screens that I use to screen the clay, mm -hmm. They're just window screens that I've screwed onto wooden frames. Or mm -hmm. A lot of times it's just a really um, low budget production. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't really, you know, I don't spend too much time on it or fuss with it too much. I kind of mm -hmm. just work it until it says it's ready. And then um, I let it sit for a full year. Okay. Um, yeah, in the water, um, I hear it you know, helps to make it a little more plastic. Mm -hmm. And then um, once it warms up, I go out and I'll collect it all and uh, get it to the point where it's usable. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, for me personally, before I moved here, and I think for a lot of people, we just don't realize like how long of a process it is to go from the like original clay to a finished pot. Yeah, uh, a lot of times at different shows or when I'm explaining the process to people, They'll ask me, you know, how much time do you have into each pot? Or about mm -hmm. how much did this take? And it's a really hard thing to record, even mm -hmm. if I wanted to. 
Right. Um, just because there's hours spent gathering, hours spent preparing the clay. And, right. Um, everything before even making pots. Yeah, exactly. There's so much to the process before you even start building. That makes sense. Yeah. But it's it's an amazing process and it's you know it's a lot of work mm -hmm. but that's some of the some of my favorite that's one of my favorite things about it is that it really kind of calls in people mm -hmm. uh, whenever I'm out there sorting clay I, I, I tend to find that people come out and want to jump in the water with me too or, um, yeah I just took part in the Adobe conference where I was learning how to mud plaster oh cool and it's really the same way where it, it requires a lot of labor, but it's great because you need a lot of people and it's kind of a community builder there. Right. Mm -hmm. Can we see that little seed pot again? I think I cut you off where you could really show it off. Yeah, sure thing. It's just a little chubby thing. <laughs> oh, wow. It's but... so... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just saying it's a really beautiful uh, little pot. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, and it's just got a little hole, you know. It's best to keep your seeds cold and dark. But um, I'm not sure if people can see. I have seeds falling out of it right now. Yeah, I did notice that. <laughs> They're the uh, the wild spinach here. <laughs> so do you find that you can just, like, sit down and work on your pottery at any time? Or do you have to be, like, inspired or be in, like, a certain mind mindset? Sure. I uh... I mean, Clarence really instilled a lot of important lessons, but that was probably one of the major ones. Um, while you're working, you know, your thoughts and your energy really embed themselves in the clay. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're in a bad mood, you can kind of see that in the end result, in the end pot. Um, a lot of times during the firing, you'll see explosions and not really know why. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I only try to, you know, work with the clay when I'm in a good space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that goes for the whole process, really. Okay. Um, shoot, I had another important point that I'm forgetting right now. Maybe it'll come back to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you ever recycle any of the clay from the pieces that don't make it through the firing into like new pots? Yeah, all the time. Um, I actually just had a few catastrophes. Um, I've been making these spoons lately. Mm -hmm. These little dippers. Um, and this one's treated with a few things with some uh, pinon sap to oh. kind of make more waterproof mm -hmm. uh, for teas or for whatever kind of soup. But I've had a, a number of them just sort of break off. Oh. Um, and so when it's before it's fired, you can really just put it back in a bucket and rehydrate it. Okay. I think my phone cut out. Um, and you've been working with, oh, sorry, the Wi-Fi cut out. Um, you work with Mydic? Uh, yeah. Right? My to sell those. Uh, yeah. My yeah, and those spoons are really only through Mydic Mida goods, but um, it's, been a, it's been a great project working with her. And, um, my brother is actually another potter on that site, so. Oh, okay. That's great. A great little community. Um, but yeah, any kind of pot that doesn't quite work out before the firing um, just gets broken up and rehydrated. And then it's pretty easy to take it back to usable clay. Okay. Um, but once a pot is fired, I have somewhere here, I have some chunks of pots that, or other spoons that have been fired that have broken after the fact. Oh, uh -huh. And so those ones you really have to grind back down to a powder and you can add that back to your clay as a, as a grog or as a binder. Mm -hmm. And it really just makes your, your clay body a little stronger. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I like that idea of like, you know, the pot being made up of other, other pieces. And so it's not just like that one piece. Oh yeah, for sure. It's, you know, it's so much work to get to the point where you can even use the clay. Mm -hmm. And so it's such a special thing that you really don't want to see any of it go to waste. Um, and so it's great to, you know, bring it all back into one. Do you have any uh, works in 
process or progress right now in your uh, little studio? You know, not too much. I have a lot of spoons that haven't been fired yet. Um, let's see. I'll grab a few through various phases. So this is one um, before it's even slipped. This is just the raw clay that I've sanded. Uh, and it's about ready to get the final clay slip, which is mm -hmm. just the fine layer where you sort of take off the top layer of your clay, which has the finest grains, I guess, and just okay. coat it. Yeah, it's kind of amazing that it goes from that color to the like beautiful golden uh, finished product. Oh, it's amazing. Like even this one you can see is a little darker. Mm -hmm. um, and this one has been slipped. So it's gotten that layer and it's ready for a fire now. But mm -hmm. as soon as you put it in the fire, it's kind of like, it's like your birthday, you know, you put all your pots in. Mm -hmm. After the final firing, they come out with all these beautiful marks. and It's like unwrapping presents. Yes. And so do you intend for your uh, spoons to be used as well? Oh yeah, I, I think everything I make is really intended for some sort of use. Um, it's pretty rare that I'll make anything that, you know, can't be used in the kitchen or used for some purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and these are one of those things that as soon as someone sees them, you know, they're beautiful, but no one wants to really put them to work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm hoping so. I'm hoping to make a, a series of videos where, you know, I can demonstrate how strong they are. Right. Yeah, I think that's, people think they're so fragile, but they are really strong. And yeah, it's just amazing to see, like, in the SAR collection, we have so many pots that are, like, hundreds of years old, and they're still here. Um, strong. Oh, I had such a fun time going through your, through the collection there. There's so many amazing, just really nice and round pots that had, like, stains from the food that was cooked in them. Mm -hmm. things were stained and ah, I just think about whatever meals were served there yeah it's some of the pots too like the salts will start to like come out of the clay over time um and it's just yeah I love seeing those signs of use and I feel like a lot most of the potters that come in with the collection those are the ones that they're drawn to the ones that have like that history of use that's cool yeah I yeah, that's the goal for all of my pots is to find them a good place where, you know, they'll, they'll find use and mm -hmm. um, it's a hard thing, you know, at, at, at a certain price point, you know, you don't want to touch it. Right, exactly. Um, and let me show you one more pot for better reference. This is something that has been slipped maybe once, but I'll probably put another coat on it. And so this one will be fired here probably in the next few days. And so do you ever do one at a time or do you wait until you have a good uh, collection that are ready to be fired? I've been told I'm a pretty aggressive um, <laughs> fire. I, I know a lot of people will really do one and do it very uh, slow and methodically, but I'll throw maybe 20 pieces in at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it's very ad hoc. You'll see pieces right. stacked on top of one another. Wow. Um, but it goes back to that philosophy of, at least for me, you know, of kind of um, not letting their heads swell too much. Right. It's breakages are kind of a reality of being a potter. Mm -hmm. And I definitely try to minimize it. And I don't have very many breakages now, but... Mm -hmm. It's not something that I try to, you know, avoid at all costs. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be in residence. I think your start date is September 1st. Yeah. Um, I would love to hear more. I mean, I know about your project that you're planning on for your residency, but um, I'm sure our viewers would love to hear more about what you plan to work on while you're on campus. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. And it's a project that, you know, is still evolving and, um, I'm sure will continue to evolve until I get in there. Um, but originally, you know, I had learned how to make micaceous pots and I had always seen these pots um, around town or online or in person, you know, and they were these beautiful 
golden shining pots um, in museums and whatnot. And I never really realized that, you know, these pots could have such vibrant and, you know, yeah, such a wide range of finishes and decorations until I went into the SAR um, collections. I had always heard that they were, you know, my Cassius pots were undecorated and were all about the shape and were a lot of times left gold. And so when I went there, it kind of opened my eyes. To, um, I saw pots with, you know, the, the um, twisted necklace mm -hmm. or with a bunch of other decorations and um, a bunch of other finishes. And so the project I'm hoping to complete will really just be an exploration of different finishes and different firing techniques that I can do working with my Cassius pottery. Mm -hmm. um, I know like one of the ones I'm most excited about and um, we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be a big learning process is screen printing on top of uh, a my Cassius pot. Mm. And so the idea will be to um, slip and buff a my Cassius pot um, to the point, you know, where it's got a, a little sheen mm -hmm. and screen printing something on top of that okay. with just the raw micaceous clay mm -hmm. and creating a, a two-tone effect. Um, and so I think a bunch of alternative finishing techniques is really going to be the base of it. Yeah, that's really exciting. The screen printing idea is something I've like never seen or heard of before so i'm excited to see how that turns out yeah me too um and so to prepare for that i've been you know going around town and or going around this area and really trying to find a few of the different types of micaceous clay mm -hmm. you know mica, mica is just the mineral which um works its way into different clay bodies and so you have you know the vibrant orange red and you also have grays and you have a whole variety of what micaceous clay can be. Mm -hmm. um, and so working within that will be great. And so one thing I'm really excited about is that you plan to do some firings on campus, um, which we're really looking forward to and will require some work with the local fire department. Um, but how many firings do you think you'll do during your residency? You know, I'm trying to be ambitious and say about one every week. Okay. Which would be 12 total, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite a bit. Yeah. We'll see, I might have to cut it down from that. <laughs> I say start big and then, you know, we can always be flexible. So that's really exciting. Um, yeah. You know, I've never had this much time or the space or the freedom to work um, with, with the clay in this way. You know, it's always been as a as a side thing to my architectural education or to my mm -hmm. architectural um, profession. And so um, to dedicate that time will really be amazing. And I'm, you know, I'm not sure how much I can make in that time. And so, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, I love seeing like the artists who come in, like how it's just amazing how dedicated people are to their practice and how being on campus like really kind of supports and facilitates that especially this past year i think it's been really hard to be away from people you know our families friends but all of the artists we've had have just like really enjoyed the the time and space on campus to to work on you know what they love doing yeah it's gonna be great i can't wait Let's see. Okay, so we have another question. What do you feel this project that might, what do you feel this project might say or do for the medium? I think it might, or I hope, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily want to say that there's anything wrong with, um, you know, what I grew up learning, but I hope it'll encourage others to connect with the clay mm -hmm. in a way that's honest with them. Mm -hmm. Um you know, to really explore all of the potentials that are out there with, you know, just this material. Um, 
because I know there's, you know, there's people in, in my Pueblo and other Pueblos who are doing similar things or taking unconventional routes while navigating, you know, or working with the clay. Right. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to see like what you create and how um, like visiting with the collection kind of um, inspires you or um, changes your project. Me too. There's, there's so many beautiful things past even, you know, utilitarian objects. Um, I haven't really made many things other than, you know, bean pots and spoons. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Diego, who works with you guys regularly, let's see, um, asked me to make him some little baby turtles a while back. That is so cute. And so these are one of the few things that I've made um, outside of that. But I'm hoping that I'll, I'll have a chance to explore things like that even. We, well, it's funny that you um, brought that little turtle out because last month, uh, Diego worked with our coworker, Stephanie Riley, to do a little uh, turtle making tutorial here on our Instagram Live. And it was great. I wasn't sure like how well the tutorial was going to translate to Instagram Live, but um, I think it was really awesome. And we received some pictures of people's turtles after the event. And it was just really, to see like everyone's different interpretations of a turtle. It was really amazing. I was actually shocked with how Diego's turtle came out. <laughs> it was, he was like being really like modest about it the whole time. And then when he finally showed the turtle, it was incredible. Um, oh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, that's funny because when um, I invited you to participate in the Vilchuk project. That was one of the first things Diego told me about you was that he had asked you to make him a baby turtle. <laughs> All connects. That's yeah, exactly. It's full circle now. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm going to be really mindful of your time, but I have a few more questions. And so um, for our viewers, just a reminder, please put any comments or questions in the chat and I will be sure to share those. Um, ooh, we have another question. How do you feel the difference in scale between architecture and pottery translates into the effects they have on our bodies? Hmm. Such good questions here. That is a great question. Um, and it's something that I think a lot about. Um, and it's hard to say that there really is any difference in my mind. You know, they're objects that we move around and within. Um, and so in the same way you inhabit a house and you kind of can step inside and feel the cool air and, you know, get that smell of the earth um, or even of the fire. I, I get the same sensation when I'm, you know, experiencing a pot mm -hmm. pulling out from the fire, you know. Um, I think hmm, they're really just places to inhab inhabit. Right. And so, I don't know, there's so many amazing things that connect the two. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I even, some of the pots that I have that don't make it out of the firing, I'll use as, you know, planters and I'll put plants in them and they hang out inside of the house. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think at every level, they kind of are just places to occupy, or not occupy, it's a bad word, <laughs> but <laughs> places to inhabit. Mm -hmm. connect yeah. with. That makes sense, definitely. Um, let's see. So are you currently based in Santa Fe? Or are you based in Albuquerque, Taos? So Santa Fe is actually kind of the perfect middle point um, for me between Taos and Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Taos at the Pueblo and went to university at Albuquerque. And so Santa Fe is right in the middle of those two. Um, and it mm -hmm. should be a good connecting point, you know? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so what are you most looking forward to about either the residency or being in Santa Fe? I think I've never really had the experience of having a space that was fully dedicated to mm -hmm. play. Um, or to the practice. And so like right now, um, 
I'm in one corner of my bedroom at my child home and house. So um, it's pretty rare that I'm able to find that space and that time. Right. And so that'll be something that will be amazing because I've never had the opportunity to, you know, exhaust myself completely in mm -hmm. play. Um, but also that the collections at SAR are really something that I'm hoping to spend a good amount of my time in. Yeah, definitely. That's one. I know it's my favorite thing and it's like many of our staff really enjoy being able to like, you know, offer the time and space to, in the collections because it's, you know, really, I mean, all of the pieces we have are incredible and we are happy to be a resource otters and local community members. So we're excited that you get to be on campus and interact with the pottery. Yeah, I can't wait to go back and yeah, explore. And then I have, well, I have two more questions for you. So um, you mentioned Indian Market and then also Mida Goods. Are those the best places to, um, I guess, see any inventory that you might have or, you know, learn about anything you're working on? Sorry, I think my phone cut out again. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to get back on social media. Mm -hmm. um, so I have an Instagram handle, uh, which you can probably find. Yes, yeah, so right we'll on the video when we save it. Okay, great. And I have a website um, along the same name. Okay. Uh, .com, and But for the most uh, up-to-date, probably Mida Goods right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, and will you be participating in uh, Indian Market this year? You know, I I don't think I will be. Um, the first year that I par participated in Indian Market, I came away with the first place ribbon. Oh, wow. It, That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was really excited. And then I applied for the, the following year and didn't get in. So... <laughs> Um, it's kind of been a whirlwind, but hopefully yeah. in another year, but I'm exploring, you know, other places to have the work be present, um, other than just markets and galleries and shows. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, I mean, it's interesting to see so many different markets happening in and around Santa Fe. Um, but I think it's also important that you, you know, have some time before you start your residency and, um, you know, then you can really focus on what your project is. So, uh, yeah, we're excited to have you on campus very soon. Yeah, I can't wait. All right. Well, I think that's all I have for you. We're really grateful for your time. And um, we will be sharing this video on our Instagram or IGTV if you want to share it with anyone. Um, and, yeah, I think that's all I have for today. Awesome. Well, thank you for this. And thank you, everybody, for joining and watching. All right. Oh, and I have one more announcement. Sorry, I'm doing a shameless plug here that we have another SAR Makes coming up on January 30th uh, with Diego. And I think he'll be working with one of our staff members, uh, Nate Francis, to do uh, some more art making on Instagram Live. So if you can tune in, definitely join. It'll be a lot of fun. I don't know if we'll be making turtles, but I'm sure it'll be great. Um, so thank you so much, Brandon. Um, it was nice chatting with you, and we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye.